Well, the Department of Justice is now opening an investigation into Missouri Democratic Congresswoman and squad member Cori Bush for allegedly using taxpayers' money to hire her husband's private security firm. So she supported defunding police, but is now accused of funding her husband. Let's bring in criminal defense attorney and federal litigator Vic Bajaj. Vic, great to see you. One more soundbite from Cori Bush, and we'll get your take. Watch. I am under no illusion that these right-wing organizations will stop politicizing and pursuing efforts to attack me and the work that the people of St. Louis sent me to Congress to do. What she misses there, Vic, is that the DOJ, the Department of Justice, is not a right-wing organization. Opened an investigation because the accusations are concerning. What do you think? Well, that's right. You know, many of my colleagues on the other side of the bar, let's say, in the Department of Justice say, you know, Mr. Bajaj, I understand your argument, but hey, we just can't ignore crime. And while there may be congressional committee disciplinary hearings that have come to a conclusion that there's nothing here to see, uh, that's of no consequence. When the Department of Justice is knocking on your door and there are subpoenas filed, yep. it's very much a, a strategic decision because they want to wait until they can get as much evidence, including testimony, on the congressional floor as possible. She has a big worry that may and should keep her up at night, unfortunately, for yeah. her. I wanted to move on, if I could, Vic, to the Fonnie Willis case, because the New York Times wrote this. We're talking about the Fulton County, Georgia prosecutor who has been accused of, you know, she's been accused of some, um, some poor behavior. And the New York Times says the accusations against the Atlanta prosecutor, Fonnie Willis, what we know, quoting, the question of whether the prosecutor should be disqualified if the claims are proven true has divided legal experts. Some have called on Mr. Wade, that's the, the paramour, the, the boyfriend, and Miss Willis to resign from the case in part to avoid the possibility of delaying a trial date. Do you think that she's going to resign from this? case, Vic, and might the trial be delayed? Well, there are a number of different options that a judge has. Let's assume for argument's sake, the judge says, you know what, this is too close to the sun here, Miss Willis. The district attorney's office may have been compromised because essentially you are paying yourself because you benefited by these lavish vacations along with your, your boyfriend. Well, if that's the case, the judge has a number of options. Number one is, should the attorney general's office get involved, the attorney general's office has jurisdiction over all state prosecutions when a viable conflict is mm -hmm. at stake. So that's one option. But there are less restrictive means, which I have found in my experience judges really lean on. One is create sort of a compartment. Everybody that dealt with Ms. Willis in this case and this potentially tainted prosecutor needs to be excised from further involvement in the case. The problem is here, Trace, this case was a grand jury indictment, if we remember. Right. That means the district attorney's office and her colleagues were the only advocates for the side encouraging the grand jury to return what we call a true bill. So in this case, to maintain due process rights under state and federal constitutions, the judge is going to have a very difficult time coming to a conclusion that a quid pro quo, let's say, line your old pockets, and a violation of due process yeah. did not occur. The question is what will be the consequence, but there are a lot less restrictive means, Trace, than just dismissing yeah. the charges. Vic Bajaj, great to have you on as always, sir. Thank you. Thank you.